Okay. I am speaking with the fierce Chantel. Hey, darling. A young and talented beauty from Barbados. Her album, No Gravity, is set to hit stores this summer. Before we get into the music talk, for our fabulous readers here who may not be familiar with you, let's kind of chat about your story. Okay. You grew up in Barbados. You were one of those girls who not only excelled at academics, but also in sports. You weren't... Yep. But you weren't the goody two-shoes that many may have thought. Can you tell me what you did back in the day? Yeah, back in the day when I was in school, I just kind of, I don't know what, maybe I was trying to find myself. Like, I don't know, but I just, my family, it's kind of weird. My dad's side is a very athletic side of the family, and then my mom's side is very artsy. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just, you know, was in both worlds anyway, and I just, I guess it was kind of natural that I ended up doing a little bit of both, but, um... You know, I was on the swim, on the Barbados swim team. I was on like my school's tennis team, the Barbados track and field team. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and then, yeah, then like you said, you know, I was still um, juggling school with all that stuff and still trying to make music somehow, even if it was in my head, you know. Mm -hmm. And you'd run off to the to the recording studio and kind of do your thing. Yeah, like um, a lot of the, a lot of the girls, you know, they would. And this is still like a common thing that, you know, kids lie to their parents, so they, obviously, so they can do whatever they want. And most of the other girls would be lying to their parents saying, I have a sleepover with the girls. And then they would go over, but then, the, you know, they'd go to the club or something like that. And I would, I would tell my mom, yeah, I'm going to the club. Mm -hmm. But then I would really be going to the studio. <laughs> Sneaky. So I guess now that she knows the truth, she probably feels a lot better that I wasn't actually in the club all, the all those times I was saying. Mm-hmm. Now, what I love about you, Chantel, is that you followed your dreams despite what people around you thought. And yeah. what I read is that it kind of seems to me like your dreams kind of followed you in a sense. You went to college. Yeah. You went to college to be a lawyer. And at what point did you decide that you were going to give that up to pursue music? Uh, oh, my gosh. Well, first of all, it was the hardest decision of my life, but... I just kept feeling that, you know, there were so many examples of people saying, I wish, you know, a what if. And I, I just didn't want to live a what if life. And I knew that I basically had two more semesters, I mean, two more courses left before I graduated. And the opportunity came up for me to sign my production deal with SRP Records. And it was just so hard because I felt like, oh my gosh, I got this far, you know, with my school. But, uh, and then I just thought, you know what, music really is my first passion and it's just I can't it's the only thing I don't get bored of mm -hmm. so I, you know I, I just had to make the decision to at least take a shot because I knew if I got that far in school I had pretty much already decided okay I've already figured out that I can do this mm -hmm. so let me try the thing that I really want to do mm -hmm. and I knew that everyone was going to hate it <laughs> but I just like you said I just had to be brave enough to, to pursue my dream mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, because yeah. you are from Barbados, and I've kind of read about your experiences with Rihanna growing up, can you tell yeah. my readers a bit about um, your Get Down and Give Me 20 story involving Rihanna? Oh, yeah. I mean, Rihanna was, well, she's a very funny person. I mean, if you've ever been around her, she's, she's hilarious. She's, she's a real practical joker, like a real prankster. So she, she's always a lot of fun to be around, and, um, she, you know, it's been that way since we were little, and we were in the cadets together. So the, the story that most people know is about the fact that I pretty much had to give her push-ups. Because mm -hmm. I was in the cadets, and I was a drill sergeant, we were at summer camp, and, uh, she, like, shows up late with a bunch of other girls, so it was actually a whole group of people who ended up doing push-ups on that day, mm -hmm. and I've done my own share push-ups in cadets, but yeah, everyone, everyone kind of like hears that story and thinks it's pretty hilarious because they're trying to imagine me and Rihanna like in fatigues and boots and mm -hmm. doing push-ups and stuff like that, so it's pretty, I think it's a pretty fascinating idea for most people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, definitely. But yeah. Now, your new album, No Gravity, comes out this summer. Is there a confirmation on a date yet for that? No, we don't have a date yet, but the last thing I heard was we were going to try to definitely get it up by August. Okay. Now, let's be honest here. With Chantelligence, you kind of tiptoed onto the music scene. You had yeah. t-shirt to get you noticed. And yeah. um, 
but you know just hearing Licky and Impossible from No Gravity my gut feeling has me thinking that you're about to be flying high now <laughs> what are your thoughts on the direction that this new album is taking versus you know your debut album yeah I really feel like the direction of this new album No Gravity is kind of it's definitely a lot more of it's, it's really me. Um, you know, I loved all kinds of music, and when I grew up at Barbados, it was like we had we listened to all the same mainstream music that uh, people listen to right here in, in, in the U.S. You know, we was, we had MTV, we had BET, mm -hmm. so we loved all the same music, and I grew up, you know, listening to the same Michael Jackson and everything, so I always was just inspired to make all kinds of music, and I just felt like I had a lot more freedom this time, mm -hmm. and it was really, the music this time around is so much more influenced by, I, you know, all my traveling, because I got to tour with some incredible artists and, and groups, mm -hmm. I got to tour with New Kids on the Block, Akon, Beyonce, mm -hmm. and these were like, you know, we were in Europe, the UK, Asia, mm -hmm. and so I got like a whole different experience, like musically, culturally, and all those things influenced this album so I just feel like I wanted to make sure that it was a lot more radio friendly and a lot edgier and fun mm -hmm. because I realized at the end of the day that's really what people want you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. impossible oh my god it is one of those songs <laughs> that when I first heard it I was like this is hot and wow. you, can always, you can always tell a hit from the first time you hear it you know you have those yeah. kind of songs that you listen to and they kind of grow on you but Impossible right. was just like, bam, I love it. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. We were really scared um, at first, you know, we were like, is it a good idea to release Impossible now? Because it was like at a time where there was like no battles on the radio at all. And there still is. I mean, Impossible, like on Top 40 radio, the only other ballad I think is like Kelly Clarkson is already gone. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much old now. Mm -hmm. So I just, we were really scared because we were like, wow, it doesn't seem like, you know, Top 40 Radio is, like, really messing with mm -hmm. <laughs> ballads right now. And they're like, this could be very not good. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we thought, we, we knew that there was a risk that we would get swallowed mm -hmm. and all the up-tempo stuff that was out there. But we just really believed in the song. We just knew, like, come on, you know, everyone knows this song so beautiful. And